The last topic in pediatric diseases is tumors. And as you see, when we get into the uh, sections on systemic pathology, we will generally reserve the discussion of tumors uh, to the end as well. It's a uh, somehow uh, a classical thing in uh, pathology uh, courses. Um, clearly and classically and rightfully so, the best way to classify pediatric tumors is the way you classify any tumor as benign or malignant. So we'll talk about the common benign and malignant tumors and give you a few statistics and a few pictures and start out by saying that the most common benign tumors in kids are hemangiomas. In fact, they are almost synonymous with the term birth mark, although they're slightly different. Uh, hemangiomas uh, are very similar to lymphatic tumors because in both cases you have irregular vascular spaces lined by endothelial cells but in the case of a hemangioma they'll be filled with blood in the case of a, a, lymph a benign lymphatic uh, tumor they won't be uh, sometimes benign uh, fibrous tissue elements fibromas uh, are seen uh, commonly in kids but by far hemangiomas are the most common it wouldn't be fair if we didn't more or less classify the uh, childhood teratomas as being uh, um, a common benign tumor also. About 10% of these are malignant, but uh, most of the childhood uh, teratomas are benign. So here's your quick little differential of common benign uh, childhood tumors. Hemangioma is a birthmark, uh, like many uh, hemangiomas, especially superficial ones by the skin, they look red. Uh, the thing about hemangiomas is that uh, besides the fact that they're the most common benign tumor of infancy, uh, and they're usually seen on the skin, especially face and scalp, is that they regress spontaneously in many cases. And uh, you probably have seen or heard of or perhaps delivered or had one yourself, a birthmark, even if it was something as big and as red as this, very often it is not unusual. In fact, it is the rule to have spontaneous uh, regression you know, within a couple of years, perhaps looking normal. My daughter actually had a little hemangioma on her face, uh, and the plastic surgeon helped it along by zapping it with laser, but he may not have had to do very much. Uh, a word about teratomas. As you remember, we defined teratoma as a tumor derived from more than one germ cell layer, you know, ectoderm, endoderm, mesoderm, and usually all three. And the most common place for a teratoma in a uh, newborn is sacrococcygeal. And although uh, most of them are benign, let's say 88%, I said 90 before, it's... Um, has a relatively low frequency, and like many other tumors, it's more common in boys than in girls. Even though most of them are benign, they could present like very, very serious uh, problems in terms of surgical removal, and uh, represent uh, you know a lot of even the benign ones can represent a lot of danger for the baby. They can be very large, is what I'm saying, and even though. You could put this under a microscope and all the pathologists will tell you B9, B9, B9. I mean, this would probably be a life-saving surgical operation or a life-threatening surgical operating to uh, remove that. Um, let's talk about malignant. And we'll talk about malignant tumors in kids uh, as a generality and then talk about the two most common, what they call solid tumors of children. The reason why we call them solid tumors is that the most common malignant tumors of kids are not solid at all. They're leukemias, aren't they? Uh, if you wanted to categorize lymphomas in with them, then you're getting more into the solid. But when we talk about the common uh, bulky solid tumors in kids, which are classically usually malignant in all senses of the word, we're talking about neuroblastoma and Wilms tumor. Here in this table is a general quick list, uh, not to be memorized, but as you can see, uh, leukemias are not solid. They're the most common uh, tumors in kids all the way up to age 10. And then to have a leukemia in a kid after 10 is really not very common at all. Uh, retinoblastomas, 
uh, malignant tumors of the eye, neuroblastomas, Wilms tumors. These are all in the younger kids. In the older kids, you don't see retinoblastomas, neuroblastomas, will tumors, or leukemia. You see things like hepatocarcinoma, soft tissue sarcomas, even things like thyroid and uh, Hodgkin's disease, which is a, a lymphoma, uh, which we'll get into in the uh, chapter on lymphomas. Um, brain tumors, also considered solid tumors in kids also in this younger age group. So it seems like there's a relatively dividing line uh, between kids uh, younger than 10 versus older. And if you remember, the three most common ones at all, under 10 or 4, aren't there at all after 10. At this point, I have to go on to a little rant. I'm sorry, because we talked about with the benign tumor of uh, hemangioma, we said that it regresses spontaneously, didn't we? So let's talk about malignant tumors regressing spontaneously as well. You will encounter and you will hear of and you will read in the literature and you will have pathologists tell you that they have seen obviously extremely malignant tumors that have gone away all by themselves, no treatment, spontaneously gone. Well, when cases like this are presented, they're usually talking about pediatric malignancies. And what we have seen is that a lot of times uh, the tumor or tissue in question does not really spontaneously go away. It just matures. So what I'm trying to say is uh, every now and then you'll hear cases of spontaneous regression of malignant tumors, which, of course, is hard to believe because we've already taught you that cancer, like pregnancy, just doesn't go away. But uh, when you hear these cases, which really happen, they usually be in kids. Let's talk about uh, the concept of small, round, blue cell tumors. This is not a specific uh, type of tumor, but if you remember, we mentioned all of the common solid tumors of kids, especially the ones under 10, but also in older ones, like the sarcomas. We said that neuroblastoma and Wilms tumor were common, lymphomas were common, and if you add the other things, which we won't go into, rhabdomyosarcoma and Ewing's tumor, microscopically, when you look at these, they all look like lymphomas or oat cell carcinomas because they have small, round, blue tumors, blue nuclei, minimal cytoplasm, and that's why they're called small, round, blue cell tumors. It's generally a name to describe the histology of most uh, pediatric solid tumors. Of course, you would uh, take these cells and uh, under have them undergo various antigen stains with immunoperoxidase or electron microscopy to look for tiny little vesicles or neural structures, let's say. And uh, you could then help further differentiate them. Often there are other features that will differentiate them, and we'll actually show you some. Um, Often, with, as with adult tumors, you can do chromosomal analyses and find sometimes regular, predictable uh, chromosomal uh, anomalies, translocations, so forth, that are associated with specific types of tumors. Let's talk about neuroblastomas. But let's talk about neuroblastomas in the next clip, because I just want to open the door to it. That's the second most common malignancy of kids. Yeah, there's almost a thousand cases every year in this country, and like the adrenal gland and the sympathetic ganglia, they all originate from neural crest, so it's not surprising that the neuroblastomas originate in the area of the adrenal gland or sympathetic ganglia, but they're so huge you would never know it, uh, but let's just say that's their origin. And uh, if we remember, we talked about retinoblastomas uh, being familial. Well, neuroblastomas are usually not familial, and they occur due to um, mutations uh, before, uh, for I'm sorry, after uh, uh, fertilization and growth. Uh, the median age diagnosis of a neuroblastoma is 22 months. So remember, most neuroblastomas are probably not seen during the first year. And uh, we'll continue with neuroblastomas in the next clip. Thank you very much.